to the racks every week. Keep craving that rush that you get when you flip to the next page. Life is better when you live in between Wednesdays. Yes, eh? You got a mass of back. What's up, folks? I'm your host, Conrad, on Wednesday Night Reviews, and today I'm joined by Caleb York once again to talk about Bouncy Ball Man and the coming campaign for issues two and three. Caleb, thanks for coming on the show again. Yeah, th thanks for having me again. It's, uh, it was fun last time. Well, you know, I absolutely was looking forward to this. I mean, you put me on the cover of the first issue, so for <laughs> yeah. sure I'm coming back. Um, yeah. For the, the folks who maybe didn't catch our last interview, haven't heard about Bouncy Ball Man, um, let's start the same way as we started, uh, which is simply, who is Caleb York? Um, uh, Caleb York is, as always, unsure of how to answer that question succinctly, but uh, <laughs> he'll do his best. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I was born in, in Richmond, Virginia, um, moved up here to New York City, been living here for a few years. Uh, I write ads in my day job, but uh, this past year, or I guess the last year, now that's 2023. Um, I've always loved comics, so I just figured I had to had to make one of my own. Um, and it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, uh, a lot of learning. So I guess chief and chief uh, chiefly Caleb York's a writer, um, and he's happy to be on the show. Beautiful, I love it. I think it's a great <laughs> intro. Uh, next important question: Who or what is Bouncy Ball Man? I thought you were going to say, what is Caleb York? <laughs> Human as far as he knows. Uh, yeah, Bouncy Ball Man, um, the comic. Uh, it's kind of a superhero comedy action story. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. Um, it's, a, it's a great superhero comic for people who hate superhero comics. And it's a great superhero comic for people that love superhero comics. At least that's how I've been describing it. Uh, um. It's written by Caleb York, art by Rick Alves. Um, we've got a great team. Um, that's Bouncy Ball Man, the book. Bouncy Ball Man, the character. Uh, it's Cody Dillon. He's this uh, kind of aging stuntman. He's getting on in years. Just went through a messy divorce. His career is not going so great. And in issue one, he's given this kind of second chance as this mascot for a toy company. And he takes it just to pay the bills, but he accidentally ends up uh, saving the day and getting famous as a result. And that's kind of where issue two um, picks up. Beautiful. Um, one thing I did want to say, obviously, like, I, I have the book over my yeah. shoulder. <laughs> uh, I obviously I've read through it. And one of the things that I, I actually liked most about Cody, having now been able to read the whole story or the whole issue, I should say, is he's not well put together i mean he's, he's yeah. gone through some rough stuff but he's not well put together he's not the smartest person in the world and that makes him so terribly relatable i think yeah, yeah. um I, I find with a lot of indie comics or a lot of any sort of hero comic because bouncy my man is kind of a hero um there's, yeah there's, there's hero, a hero adjacent maybe yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um there's a, a tendency to make the character you know batman-esque super intelligent or always on the ball you know three steps ahead of everybody and it's nice to just see cody just being like man can just the world go right for me i you know i'm good at what i do and i just i need my chance and yeah he's not on the ball he's in the ball yeah. <laughs> literally yeah i get, get what you're saying um <laughs> yeah i mean i think uh i mean maybe for me it was just like laziness uh it's kind of super easy to relate to a hero that doesn't have like yeah he's not batman he's not rich he's not smart he's not superman he doesn't really have any powers um the bounty ball man suit is uh does give him a bit of like uh advantage but it's it's really just a giant bouncy ball man um and as uh and it is uh slightly bulletproof uh, as we find out in issue two in issue one he gets shot at by you know like this little little pistol and the bullets bounce off but as we find out in issue two oh. uh, yeah it's only only kind of bulletproof i won't i won't say anything more uh we'll to, uh, yeah later. okay cool uh then one thing i did want to ask about um the kickstarter um so obviously we're here talking about your kickstarter um the Kickstarter campaign itself is for issues two and three. Is that correct? Yeah, both both at once. Um, yeah, so two and three. Um, again, without getting too much into uh, spoilers, they they uh, it's it's can, they can kind of be seen as a two part story. Um, there's a bit of a time gap between 
um, in the story uh, between issues one and two, and uh, whereas two and three, it kind of take three takes place immediately after two. Um, so I figured it made sense to do the kickstarting uh, for them both at once, and it's also just kind of fun to um, work on two different issues at once and um, and release them simultaneously. So looking forward to it. We'll see how it goes. Hell yeah! The the next question then, um, I guess, given that you're doing the Kickstarter campaign for two and three because they're they're connected issues um just as someone who obviously i like print media it's it's what i love yeah um, i can see I, your show <laughs> <laughs> yes um I, I guess i'm just curious about the decision to do two separate issues two and three as opposed to one fat second yeah. issue um what sort of was the the mentality behind that yeah i did i did think about just doing like a giant sized um issue honestly it might have made things easier um i think mostly the answer is just like kind of just keeping with tradition you know like back in the day you were waiting like months or like a month in between comics so if it ended on a cliffhanger you kind of had that month to you know anticipate uh -huh. what happened next um and it, also you know i like um they are interconnected stories but they are definitely two distinct um stories so um I think pacing wise, they both work better as uh, as single issues um, versus being put together. I think it might be a bit too much. Um, so like that's what ultimately drove the decision. And I also, you know, there's just a part of me that just kind of likes the consistency of like, you know, every issue is kind of the same length. It's funny you mentioned that. Like, it, it, it's something I've realized as I've gotten, I can't, I can't say older, I'm not that old, but I'm not exactly young anymore. Yeah. Um, as I've been into comics as long as I have, um, I, I've learned that I definitely appreciate the floppies being 20 to 30 pages given the company and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, th there's something about that consistency that I really enjoy. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see you're sticking with it. It's just super Yeah, cool. yeah. And maybe it's not advisable, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my, I've already committed to it, so it's too late now. Um, but yeah, no, I'm the, I'm, I'm the total same way. Right uh, on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you, when you go to like a comic book store, like way back when, like when they had like in the convenience stores, like the comics aisle, like you knew you were picking up like a little bite sized bit of entertainment for, for 10, 15 minutes. So that's kind of the, the dream to yes. provide my own version of that. Absolutely. No, hell yeah. Um, another thing I have to ask about the campaign. So I, I, I do want to get into the specifics about like the tiers you'll, you'll have and everything, but I gotta ask, it it's a comic about the mascot for a toy company, but it, it's about a toy company. Um, is there going to be bouncy balls? Uh, oh man, that might be a huge spoiler. Um, I mean, for the campaign, it, I don't care about the story. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, for the Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is, that's something, and you're not the first person to bring that up either. Um, I might have even mentioned that on my, on my uh last appearance um yeah maybe um i have looked into it there are a few different options um they do involve ordering a massive amount of bouncy oh, balls no. like okay um so i'm not i'm not saying never i think what i'm going to do is kind of make it a stretch goal um so if we hit that stretch goal i think i think you can kind of be uh you can kind of be hoping to have a, a bouncy ball a bouncy ball man, bouncy ball in your uh, in your loot sack, so to speak. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was wondering because, like, I know when you order, you know, uh, custom hats or t-shirts or whatever, it's always like, oh, minimum five hundred of them or more. In yeah. the case of bouncy balls, there's I imagine lot. it's yeah. quite a lot more. Yeah, than there, that, yeah, well. there's one that was uh, if you order five thousand, that's like their <laughs> like. I mean, that would be quite the marketing stunt, you know. If I released all of them in the city. Um, oh my god! Could you imagine? <laughs> Put a little <laughs> QR impressive. code on the back and just throw them everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, um, or maybe I should just get one big one. Maybe that maybe that'd be better. Just like a giant one, just leave in Central Park somewhere. Oh, that'd be so cool. Like you ever see that uh, there's this one guy, uh, I think he's like down south somewhere, but he lived on the beach and he just bought this giant footprint 
that he made or like he bought like a plaster and then like molded it to look like this giant reptile and then he would hop one foot on the beach with this footprint and then take it off and then just walk back and then people on the beach are like there's a monster <laughs> that's no one can figure this out um and yeah it was just a giant hoax but uh that's so cool maybe that's what i'll do i'll just drop a giant bouncy ball and just let people speculate do it that'd be so cool um i i forget sometimes um you know because i speak with a lot of indie comics creators from canada um or from across the states and and they're they're really widespread um but you're actually in like new york yeah that's super cool you're in like comics headquarters so yeah go create a stunt that'd be so cool (laughs) you safely obviously and legally for legal purposes and if anyone is in uh new york you can you can find bouncy ball man uh, at a couple new york stores um if you go to forbidden planet or silver age comics and queens yeah you can can get yourself a copy and that's congratulations thank you yeah that is so cool man caleb i wish you the best on this this is so (laughs) cool um so yes, uh, about the the campaign itself. So it's releasing on January tenth, correct? Yeah. Right, yeah. So... Barring any you know unforeseen circumstances or abductions, I think yeah, the tenth is <laughs> yeah. um, it will be released. Okay, um, so and this this one will go for a little long. The last one was thirty days. This one will go for a little bit longer, um, oh. just because you know it's two issues. Um, Kind of have a better idea of what i'm doing with kickstarter I, i'm definitely not an expert with just my one on my resume but yeah so i'm thinking maybe 35 to 40 days this time interesting can you guys i've never done a kickstarter and for those out there who maybe are thinking of doing their own kickstarters can you like arbitrarily pick you know i want to do 57 days could you do that think, or is it like a I gauge think- thing yeah, I think so. I remember last time they kind of gave you a like a little bit of a guide for like first timers. And I think they said like 30 to 60 days is kind of like the ideal. Uh, like any shorter, you might not get the funds and any longer, like you might just get buried in the algorithm. Mm, okay. Hmm. Yeah, at least at least for like comics, I, I assume for like giant startups of like inventing the new flying car slash <laughs> flashlight it, it takes a bit longer probably or you know if you're brandon sanderson it just yeah, yeah right. millions in a minute uh yeah weird um so for your campaign then um as of now what are the the tiers that you're gonna have how can people get your book so uh i i let people i gave people an email um to reach me at uh, both in the book itself and uh in the kickstarter and i've been listening to feedback people give me the shirts seem really popular i was really excited i was able to get some shirts oh, i should have worn mine uh, <laughs> that it, if uh, you've yeah. got one go for it i can add oh it. Okay. i actually you know what i think i actually do yeah, I do. I do have one. So, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So those those prove popular. So I think those are going to be making a comeback. Um, I still have extras too. Um, so yeah, the things people responded well to uh, personal, like the personalized thank you emails, the shirts. Um, those will be. Ma- uh, you can get a physical and digital copy. Those will both be rewards. And then I think um, just as I've been exploring some other options, there's going to be some new swag that you can get your hands on as well that wasn't available before. Some coasters, some magnets, possibly some bouncy balls if uh, if we get to uh, our stretch goal. Um, so yeah, yeah, a lot of cool stuff um, that you can get your hands on. Nice. And and um, again, in the interest of, of not scaring people away, being as forward and upfront as we can. Um, the the absolute minimum so say just a digital copy of the comic on its own um you're in the state so it'll be usd but what would be the the rate for just the digital yeah so uh so right now everyone can get their hands on bounce ball man number one digitally uh, you can read it for free at global okay. comics um so yeah first issue is uh free um on their site um obviously you get a you know a pdf version um if you supported the kickstarter uh, but after that, um, yeah, issues two and three are going to cost um, a bit. I'm thinking three dollars for the the digital issue, um, but we'll see how feasible that is. Um, for once, wait, three dollars for, for, for uh, for, yeah for uh, once it's like on Global Comics for uh, for Kickstarter, you don't have to contribute much to to get your hands on the digital issue. 
Nice. That's that, that's so inexpensive. That's beautiful. I love yeah. it. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna try my best. I make uh, no guarantees, but yeah, I was I was um, pleased. I was able to offer the print issue in uh, in comic stores. That's selling for three bucks right now. I was glad I was able to to do that. Um, that did involve a lot of like credit card points and first time printing discounts, but we'll. I'm gonna try my best to keep keep it up. Good for you. Keep it, affor- yeah. keep it affordable. Is yeah, the, no, the, you know what it? Because yeah, it, comics are crazy expensive right now. Even yeah. from like the the big publishers, you can put like five, like seven, eight bucks on like a a floppy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's insane. But like one thing I, I want to say, Caleb, that I highly appreciate is you're doing everything you can to make this as inexpensive as possible to get a very fun funny um i want to say slightly retrospective book or not retrospective but uh self you know it's looking at itself and, and having fun with it a lot yeah um and for you to be doing this as an indie creator right like that's a risk to you and i highly appreciate that because you're putting yourself out there and so far issue one's been killer so two Thank and three you. ought to be just as good I do appreciate that yeah thanks. hell yeah um uh, so I, I guess one thing I did want to ask because it's floppies and there's two of them. Um, are we going to get a situation where, or is the intent, I guess, rather whenever it's totally finished? Cause I mm-hmm. appreciate right now. Um, like we've sort of talked about the cover art is nearly done. Yeah, I am well, imagining a chunk of the interiors are on their way to be doing or being yeah. done. Yeah. Um, is the intent to like, just like you would in a real comic store, get issue two released and sent and then issue three or is the intent let's get it all together and send it all at once so ju- just just because i'm in uh in indie it's kind of just um you know <laughs> printing writing shipping distribution all that is just kind of me um so uh, for my purposes it's easier to just ship everything in one bundle which is what i did last time um so yeah you'll get two and three uh at the same time so nice. unfortunately even if two is done a bit sooner than three uh not we'll to wait for that, uh, but on on the plus side, you get to go right into into the next issue after you finish number two. Perfect. So no need, no no having those nasty cliffhangers for a month. Correct. Yeah. Beautiful. And roughly speaking, I appreciate a lot can happen between now and and when the book is done. Done. But if all goes well, the the artists are super consistent. No one gets sick, and I hope they don't. Um, roughly speaking, when do you believe it would be? finished and ready for shipping finished and ready for um so yeah i was actually kind of surpri- pleasantly surprised last time of how quick um i use comics wellspring as my printer and uh they were great so i definitely plan on using them again i was pretty pleasantly surprised how quick it took to actually print it um just by uh by dint of it being two issues instead of one i do think um, that it probably will take a bit longer um, than it just took from Kickstarter to uh, everything getting shipped out. I think it took about a month, month and a half for everyone to um, get their stuff. So probably probably maybe like a month and a half to two months instead um, is when, you know, from Kickstarter finishing to, um, to everything being ready to ship out. Yeah. So right about, am I, I'm getting this right, right about time for March break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, um, I think so. I mean, I can give you like a clear picture of where everything's at right now. So, um, like you said, the cover for two is basically done. Uh, scripts for two and three are done. Um, the uh, pencils and half of the ink for two are done. Um, and then pencils are starting on uh, number three now, as we as we speak. So, things are are uh, definitely moving and and in a good spot, but just. Things do take time, especially with that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. one artist uh, and me. But yeah, I, I uh, Rick works great and he works fast, so I'm pretty confident. Definitely, definitely by March. Awesome, yeah, and Rick is fantastic. He sit on his social media. He's I don't know how he does it. I yeah, he, like, I'll, I'll describe things to him, and I'm like, there's no way he gets this because I don't even like know how to describe it. And then he'll nail it and make it better. So yeah, he's he's fantastic absolutely yeah ricky's fantastic from from all the work i've seen him do um then i guess you know we've kind of covered pretty well the campaign and all the fun stuff there which is great um 
I guess on the the end of the story again, no major spoilers, please. Sure. But um, what can we expect out of the two issue story that is Bouncy Ball Man two and three? Yeah. Um, so it is it is a bit uh, different than one. One was kind of more of a an origin story. Um, this one definitely goes a bit more in depth into uh, Cody slash Bouncy Ball Man as a character. Uh, I'd say he's dealing with a lot more. Um, uh, his relationship with his daughter that was kind of alluded to in number one um, kind of takes the the focus of both two and, and three. It's kind of uh, how he's adapting to being famous now after the incident in one, you know, he's kind of more of a household name um, and he does, he's not necessarily thrilled about that. <laughs> um, and now he's kind of struggling to rein in some of his more uh, like impulsive and argumentative streaks that have uh, not gotten him so far uh, in life. So he's definitely definitely a, a, a character in transition, I'd say, in issues two and three. I dig it. Um, one thing I did want to ask, because I wanted to be clear on this one, um, just for me personally, really. Yeah. Um, Cody, he's... I, I guess he, he's later in his career. He's like 40-ish, correct? Something like that? I, I kind of envision me uh, just like a bit older, probably like hovering around 50 somewhere, maybe late 40s, early 50s. Okay. Um, yeah. So young enough where he can kind of still do some stunts, but old enough where it's, you know, uh, the the his glory years in his mind are are uh, are a bit behind him. So, huh. yeah. Giant yellow suit says otherwise. Yeah, that's so oh, that was. Uh, yeah. And. He's still he's still dealing with that um, with that aspect because uh, in one you know he, he's very unhappy with the fact that his new career involves putting on this giant yellow suit and having to do what his uh, uh, having a corporate boss and what that's like and you know and issues two and three he's still not quite over over those yeah absolutely it um, I guess a uh, last thing I then I wanted to ask about Cody was just um because we've touched on for for cody as a character um his situation generally what he's like um i guess a good question to ask and a fun question to ask is if you met cody would you like him <laughs> yeah i think i would i think he's like one of those people uh for me where you're uh you're charmed despite yourself like <laughs> as uh you know as self-destructive and as uh <laughs> uh maybe belligerent and contrarian as he as he can be there's like a certain likableness to him he's not it's not overly malicious um and you can kind of sympathize for him you know he's broke he's he's trying his best to revitalize his career you know trying to uh bond with his daughter deal with paying the, the bills a divorce like all this trying to make it in the entertainment industry so i think there's there's definitely a lot of things that everyone can relate to even if he doesn't uh, always handle those issues in the most constructive or healthy of ways. Agreed. No, I, I definitely, from issue one, the the impression I got is, I feel like he would be the type of person where if I saw him in a bar, I'd share a drink with him, maybe chit chat, but then I'd want to leave him be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You might want to, yes. Yeah, just, yeah, you know, all right, cool. Let's see you later, buddy. Have a good one. Yeah. Um, Astley, I think that's a good way to sort of encapsulate his character because um, he's so fun. Um, then, yeah, given we've sort of covered everything there, um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, sure. So as fun as it will be for folks to read their read your book, um, I also like for people to get to know you. Um, I often find, uh, Caleb, when folks create comics, they often themselves are rather nerdy, usually read comics and they usually collect comics that um <laughs> yeah <laughs> i uh yeah i can i can show you a little little hint of uh but yeah yeah there's uh and that's just nice. one one shelf of two uh and that's not even counting the, the floppy boxes i got in my closet nice um so one thing i, I like to ask and it is a fun starting off point for for folks to get to know you caleb is um if you had or if you could pick one item to sort of summarize this is the thing this is the the big collectible i have the the main thing that summarizes my my joy what would it be what, what's that thing uh it's actually 
probably I think I can reach up. It's right above me here. Uh, let's see if I can if I can show it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that way up there. The Star Wars panel, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you see that? It's a little high up, but that's a. Uh, that's an original uh, production storyboard um, that they used for A New Hope. Um, probably spent way too much of it considering it's a piece of paper. Um, but yeah, that that's probably it. Like Star Wars, uh, and I'm not special in this regard, but like had such a huge impact on me when I was a kid. Because um, it's just kind of like this embracing of imagination and uh, storytelling. Um, and I, I forget who said it. Somebody might have been Brian K. Vaughn. Somebody, uh, there's a quote out there. I don't want to misattribute it, but uh, it's basically like every kid from 1977 onward has been trying to like do do their own Star Wars. Um, and it's like, yeah, I, I, uh, I think so. Like it just kind of represents like the, the hope and uh, celebration of creativity that I think is like driving me at least to uh, try and write stories like a 10th as good as that. Um, so yeah, that I would say that, uh, and as you can tell from the other pieces of wall art, I was gonna say yeah, yeah, I I am a pretty big Star Wars fan. That's awesome. Then um, I, I do want to know, and we touched on this in the, our previous interview, but for the folks listening, um, how did you come across and possess now an original part of the storyboard for the original Star Wars film? Yeah, I wish I could have this like great story where like I gotten a some kind of brawl and there was a treasure hunt and stuff but really there there is just this uh movie auction site um that um that i subscribe to and every now and then i i, I didn't even think i would ever buy anything for it. i just like seeing like because every oh, yeah. they would cycle through and i'm like oh yeah that's like the the staff in lord of the rings or like that's the planet of the apes mess that's pretty cool and then they had like this huge star wars thing and everything was so expensive but these <laughs> These storyboards were still like so overpriced for what they are, but uh, they were like definitely the most affordable of the bunch. Um, and I remember wrestling for like a week over like, ugh, I really want one, but should I buy one? And uh, my girlfriend was the one who had to actually persuade me. She's like, you will regret this if you don't buy it. I'm like, you're right. So so I bought it and yeah, I, I don't regret it at all. That's super cool. And it, you know, it's interesting, like, you who in your professional life right you're a, a writer um in well, i could say this is professional as well you're now a comic creator yeah um, so we'll, the, we'll call it semi-professional yeah, yeah <laughs> in the comics community you are a writer um obviously you've had to panel out books when you're writing it uh, so it's interesting that you would end up with a piece of your childhood um fandom no, Star Wars. You know, we all love Star Wars. Um, that you would end up with a piece of it that is involved directly in the process of yeah, figuring uh, out how to make and write that movie. That that's, is a, that's cool. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't consider before. That's yeah, that's um, yeah. Wow, spot on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like like I said, it's just it's super cool. Like it, it if if ever in in the world I get to come over and and see your stuff. For sure, I want to see that because that's yeah. No, I, I I always I always force people whether they want to or not to come see it and, and bask in its splendor. That's so cool. It's eight and a half by eleven frame, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so if if that's the big thing that sort of summarizes your collection, I guess the next thing is, um, what are you reading now? Uh, I, I actually uh uh it's part of my new year's resolution to read more and i, I think no. i was doing a, a pretty good job of it um towards the end of 2022 because that's something i've been talking since i've done this i've talked to a bunch of other comic creators and there's just one common thread of like once you start writing comics it's you it's weird but you stop reading as many comics just because you're so consumed with like your own stuff um and and it's kind of everyone i've talked to like we all universally agree like that's bad so i'm trying to make like a conscious effort to and not just comics read uh books as well so yeah um yusagi uh yoyimbo by uh stan sakai um got or actually have that so Classic. Started re yeah i got uh Ooh, i got nice. the three uh the first three of these uh 
uh, the Dark Horse like uh, trade paperbacks. They're huge. They're awesome. Also in black and white, similar to Bouncy Ball Man. Um, Do they read like manga or like? Comics? No, no. Uh, they read left to right. Um, okay. Yeah, but the those are awesome. Um, what else have I been reading? Um, uh, I reread A Song of Ice and Fire, the, the Game of Thrones book oh, series. Um, like the whole thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, because the sixth book still isn't here yet. So um, they, God, they're so good. They're so, and like rereading them has, has made me like kind of forgive George R. R. Martin for the long <laughs> delay between books because. I mean, I appreciated them for what they were when I first read them, but they are just so complex. Um, and having done a bit more writing since I've uh, since I first read them, like the fact that he has kept like eighty different storylines and yeah. minor minor characters that appear on like one side of the world and like book one, and then show up in book three in, as in the background. It's like props. Take all the time you need. Like I understand um, why it's taking so long. Um, Oh, and then there is this uh, this other book that I picked up that's weirdly enough also from Dark Horse. Um, this is like in the early two thousands. Um, it was this mini series called Alabaster Wolves. Um, only thing I'll say it's like it's super weird. Um, it's like it's kind of like if True Detective and Fargo met like Constantine. Is how cool. like okay it's really it's really cool uh um, looks interesting that's for sure yeah um yeah i haven't seen a story like that um before so yeah those yeah those are kind of the main things i have been reading that's really cool well i i hope you enjoy um usagi uh yojimbo or yoyimbo um yeah i'm not i'm not sure how you say the second part i've been i think i, I switched it up every every other time so I'm, at least half the time i get it right exactly yeah um i, I do want to ask because you like you said you reread a song of ice and fire that's not a small series was that like you re you started reading them like last january and you fin like how fast oh, did you uh, read them, man i mean a lot slower than i used to as a kid i could like bang through a book in like an afternoon um yeah i mean i will say a song of ice and fire like they're they're big books but like the way the chapters like the chapters are really short so it's like very easy to get like engrossed and be like ah all right i said one more chapter but like it was three pages um and i also kind of knew like the basic beats of the story from before um so yeah it did take me a few months but not as long um as it took me the first time i was gonna say like that's 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 a healthy chunk of story. Holy yeah, it, yeah, it took a good bit. Good for you, and I hope you like, yeah, uh, Yojimo and Alabaster Wolves, because that looks amazing. Yeah, um, I would highly recommend both those. Yeah. Um, then I, I'm going to ask you a new question that uh, I think I'm going to start putting in the rotation here, uh, yes. which is, um, before my last two for you today, um, this question is going to be, um, who do you think I should interview next? I, uh, I was, and this was something I was going to ask you. Cause I don't, I, as far as I know, I don't think you've had him on your show. Um, Keith Gleason. Um, he, yeah, he's, uh, first of all, fantastic. Like, uh, I reached out to him because he's got this comic series that I really like. It's called mighty mascots. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, there's some similarities between, uh, that and bouncy ball man. Um, uh, but I really like the idea. Uh, the basic premise, uh, not to, you know, uh, I'm sure you could do a better job of pitching this than I can, but the basic premise is like these uh, serial mascots come to life in this like 3D printing accident um, <laughs> and they solve crimes. It's really funny um, and it's really great. Um, and he was super cool. He helped like answer a lot of my questions, gave me a ton of resources about like oh, Keith. Yeah, he's yeah he's also been doing it for years. Um, so he had like a lot of information to give. Super easy to talk to and fun. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I definitely recommend having him on. All right, Keith Gleason, creator of Mighty Mascots, which yeah. sounds like a wild mix of like, I don't know, small soldiers. I uh, hope I'm not dating myself too horribly there. <laughs> yeah, I know the reference. Uh, <laughs> um, and I don't know, like a supernatural or something. That's cool. I yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and he, I, 
he either just finished a Kickstarter or is still in the midst of a Kickstarter. Um, oh. for, I think he's releasing seven, eight, issue seven, eight, and nine simultaneously. So he's oh okay. That's yeah, that's one to check out. Uh, on Indiegogo, I think it's on Indiegogo, not Kickstarter. Um, but yeah, he's great. Um, and then honestly, uh, not to you know pitch my own creative team here, but I think uh, I think all the other uh, people there are worth uh, interviewing as well. Um, Kyle Brubaker, who I haven't mentioned before, um, he and I went, we went to the same college together. Oh, he's kind of done a bit of everything on the book. He's been the editor. He has designed uh, the logo that's on the cover um, oh. that you can see in the background there on your yeah. uh, right on here. your wall. Uh, and right now he's doing a uh, you know those like old school corner cover boxes that comics would have, where oh, it has yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the issue number and then like a little image of the character. He's doing that, so he's kind of like the every every man gopher uh, kind of role on the team. But um, yeah, I think he's he's got some stories you might you might find interesting if you if you ever want to interview him. Okay. Yeah. Also in advertising on the on the flip side though, he he's uh, learning to be an art director uh, versus my copywriter, so he'd also have that perspective as well. But yeah, both both cool dudes. Um, highly recommend. And again, the, the second gentleman's name, full name? Uh, Kyle Brubaker. Kyle Brubaker, thank you. Yeah. And on your book, well, like you said, he's an editor, he's designed the logo. Yeah, oh, and uh, and I should throw out, because uh, maybe he'd share with you, we did this uh, this comic strip in college called Business Jawa. Business uh, yeah, so the Star Wars, those little, like the Jawas. Yeah. The, yeah, the hooded creatures. For some reason, like we went to this candy store and the candy store bought this like life size Jawa statue and it had a candy bowl. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was super cool. But then he put like a tie on it for some reason and we just started like going, like making up the story of like how this Jawa got here. And that became a business Jawa, which is kind of like Dilbert set in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> Um, so you could ask him about that as well. I love it. Thank you. I will. And if I can get him on the show, I will be sure to ask him. About I'll, yeah, show. I'll uh, I'll send him your stuff as well. He'll, uh, Thank he'll, you. Yeah, I'll probably get a kick out of that. That's so cool. All right. Um, so then I, I want to make sure I summarize here. So for the folks out there in YouTube land, um, at the time of filming, we're on January 3rd, but at the time of release or whenever people are watching, so starting January 10th, your Kickstarter is going live. Yep. Um, it's going to be for Bouncy Ball Man issues two and three. Yep. Um, it'll be approximately 30 to 45 days. Yeah. Perfect. Which means if someone backs it um, for a relatively low cost, um, probably under 10 Canadian bucks for two books, which is wild, um, they'll probably have their books by March break time, which is awesome. Yeah love yeah. it um then caleb i guess is there anything else you want the folks to know uh, i don't know I, I yeah i asked you the the one question i had before um i guess yeah you can uh this email is also uh on the kickstarter and then last book uh if you have any questions if you uh i have a letters column uh for the second issue where I'm publishing a couple people's letters from last issue so if you want to have a chance to maybe be featured in the third issues uh, letter column. You can reach me at a uh, number one, uh, Caleb York at gmail.com. Um, yeah. So hope, hope you guys enjoy the next two issues. Beautiful. That is so cool. Caleb. Um, then absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Um, and folks out there in YouTube land, like comment, subscribe links down below, go back to the campaign. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Golden age to present, digest to oversize. Never miss new comic day. Yeah, no surprise. So where's my no prize? Check the letter columns. Can't find issue two. Yeah. Collector problems, cliffhangers, mysteries. You need answers. When did Batman become Green Lantern? I get it. True believer, not lying. Always up for an awesome summer crossover.